Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> so on Thursday afternoon, I had opened my Facebook account, and there at the top was a notation from a colleague of mine who serves in Reading that said one of the schools had to be evacuated. And it said where you could go pick up your child. And underneath it, a woman had wrote, the world needs God. And I was frustrated by her comment. And I have no idea what her background is, where she comes from or anything. But what, what struck me after a few minutes and I went back and replied was that when we say things like that, and I've heard it over and over again, that we expect a call sign to go out and God to show up. Maybe not that one. <laughs> but you get the point, you know. That if we say God needs to come down, that God will show up and will fix the world for us. But in our reading for today, Jesus reminds us that God abides within us. So after probably 10 minutes or so, I went back and replied to her that we are God. We are God's hands for the world. We are God's feet for the world. We are God's heart for the world. So if we truly believe that the world needs God, then we need to be examples of God in the world. We need to be the one who sparks change for the world in God's name. Jesus says this morning to the disciples and to us, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That commandment, those commandments that Jesus give are based, bound, grounded in love. Jesus gives two commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And if you have any question, he says, about how to do it, I will show you how to do it. He shows them over and over again what it means. He shows us over and over again what it means. And I know I've shown this before, but it's not through as a disciple of God. We are not shown by our rules, theology, righteousness, rhetoric, purity, clubs. We will be known by our love. And those of you who know Jim Spangler was here this morning in worship going, love, 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 throughout the entire sermon. Because I must have said it like 60 times. So he was like, he was right there on it, which is good. So if you all want to, that's fine too, you know, jump in. Jesus reminds us the importance of what it means to be God for the world, that we are images of God, that we are those who are able to connect, to be engaged, to serve the world, to recognize that God isn't some far off place. God is here at work within and through us because God promises to be. Because Jesus tells us that, and that we are called to then serve one another, to proclaim that love with the world, to invite and to offer, not just those who fit into a mold or who we can try to conform, but all people. I don't know where I heard this. But it's this notion that we as the church need to be the most inclusively exclusive community group for the world. Now, what I mean by that is the notion of being inclusive is that we welcome all people, no matter where they are in their journey, no matter what struggles they are having, no matter what challenges or where they are, Jesus calls us to love one another and to serve them exclusively. It means we don't go, 
Yes, you can come in. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you don't fit into our mold. Jesus calls us out and says, we are called to proclaim God's grace to the world. He shows that over and over again with parables like the parable of the Good Samaritan, where those that were supposedly cast out were the ones that showed mercy, where those that sought to do challenging things were the ones that transformed the way people thought. Whether it was the woman and the judge or whether it was his own disciples. Over and over again, Jesus called us to love one another and to live into the love of God. To do that by serving the world around us. He says in our reading for this morning, I will give you another advocate. Those in social work, those in law, no advocates are someone who are there to support, to encourage, to care. Yes, sometimes to say, wait a minute, need to think this through a little differently. But it is someone there to be with you. The spirit that we will soon celebrate on Pentecost just a couple of weeks down the road is that advocate that is coming. It is the one that Jesus reminds us will be here to continue that love, not in some far off way, but in the midst of our daily lives, in the midst of every encounter that we have. And as we celebrate this season of Easter, as we go over and over again what the importance of this time means, we remember that, yes, Easter changes everything. That this call from Jesus is a reminder that we are called to proclaim, to live our faith in love. Bless you. To abide with one another to accompany one another, to advocate for one another, to know what it means to care for the world around us, and to be there to be invitational. Because too often I have seen where churches and pastors have not. I have seen where pastors shout from the pulpit and say, if you are part of this political party or that political party, Get out because you do not belong here and you are not a true follower of Jesus. That is not what God says. Jesus says, love one another. Jesus says, be that example. Jesus says, serve one another. Jesus says, cry out. Speak the truth in love. Care for one another. Engage the world around you. That is the power of the gospel. That is the strength of the church. That is the willingness of God's grace to be impactful in the world that we make our love into action, that we make our faith something that we do, not something that we say. Martin Luther continually said, God does not need our good works, but our neighbor does. Yes, God could change things. Yes, some mysterious force could change the world and make it better, but we can too. We have the ability to speak the truth in love, to care for one another, to have dialogues, to disagree, to challenge one another, to move forward faithfully, and to care for the world around us. To live as if we are the body, the hands, the feet, the heart of God here in this place that impacts the world. And to say that we are inclusively exclusive. That all are welcome here. God reminds us of this over and over again. God's transforming power isn't through pain, isn't through Difficulty, God's transforming power is through love. A love that is for a lo us, a love that is for the other, a love that impacts us, that grounds us, 
a love that is unconditional, unchanging, unending. It is a love for the stranger, for the outcast, for the unknown. It is a love that calls us into invitation and into movement to go out into the world to proclaim God's grace through service. So whether it's an invitation or a challenge or a reminder for you this week, I invite you or I challenge you be an example of God's love this week. Be an example of God in the world, of God's impact in your life for others. Live as a servant to the stranger. Live as a servant to the other whom God loves. Show God's love to those that may not agree, that you may struggle with. Show the love of God because God isn't in some far-off place. God is here in us. So let us abide with God and let us go out and change the world in love.